Okay, so first clarification is uh, uh, on the assignment that we had for operator overloading uh, and indexers. Did I give you an assignment on indexers or no? Or only on operator overloading? Yeah. Only operator overloading, all right, so I'll give you another assignment then. Okay, um, so uh, let's say you created some class, let's pretend currency, right? Uh, and you defined in cents, in dollars, let's pretend, uh, and also the, the corresponding uh, public get set property, public get set property over here, right? Uh, and then you define public static uh, currency operator plus um, currency left hand side, currency right hand side. Okay. Uh, and, and you wrote some code over here. So for example, your typical code will be something like this, currency temp equal to new currency. And then you, you will do temp dot sense equal to uh, left hand side set dot sense plus right hand side dot sense, right? Okay, and then if temp dot sense is greater than equal to 100, okay, uh, then what will you do? You will subtract uh, 100 from it, right? And increment the dollars and return the temp currency. Right, so uh, so this is your typical code. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, for the, for the, this, this is the left hand side, right hand side. How does that work? In, I'm still trying to figure that work in memory. Okay. All right. Um, so in that case, let me. Okay. If temp dot sense is greater than 100, then you will do uh, temp dot dollars equal to temp dot left hand side dot dollars plus right hand side dot dollars plus one right and you will do temp dot cents equal to uh, temp dot cents minus a hundred okay else Ten dot dollars <coughs> equal to left hand side dot dollars uh, plus right hand side dot dollars and uh, return ten. So anyway, this is what your code will be. Uh, so to clarify what is left hand side, what is right hand side, okay, so your test code will look something like this. Uh, you will do in some kind of a button handler. You will say currency, let's say C1 equal to new currency, let's say 5 comma 7, so 5 dollars or let's make it 20 cents, five dollars, 20 cents, right? Currency C2 equal to, let's say, eight dollars, uh, let's say, 90 cents, okay? Uh, so then if you did currency C3 equal to C1 plus C2, right? Okay, so this is where the compiler checks what data type is C1. It will go back and see its currency, 
then it will check what is C2. C2 is also currency, right? Uh, so then it will go to the currency class and see was there an operator plus defined. Uh, because remember, a, a computer can only do addition on uh, integers or doubles, but not currencies, uh, unless we define it. So then it goes to the currency class and says, oh, there is an operator plus. So that means uh, this C1 will become left-hand side, this C2 will become right-hand side. Okay. Uh, so, once we say currency temp equal to new currency, we are creating in the memory something called temp, which has a cents value, which has a dollars value, right? Uh, so then we do temp.cent left hand uh, uh, side uh, dot cents. So what is left hand side? Which is C1. Uh, C1 in, in our example is $5.20, uh, so the cent amount is 20, right? Uh, right hand side in our case is C2, cent amount is 90. So it will do 20 plus 90, so this will basically become 110 in this example, right? Uh, then we are checking is it greater than 100? Yes, so then dollars. Uh, for our temp, so temp is basically our result. Okay, so dollars in the temp amount is left hand side dot dollars. What is left hand side? Left hand side is C1. Okay, uh, so it will be five. So this will be five in our example. Uh, this will be eight in our example. So five plus eight, 13. Uh, uh, plus one, 14. So this will become 14. Right? Uh, because we had already exceeded the cents greater than 100, uh, cents will be subtracted by 100. Okay? Uh, so cents will become 10. Okay? Uh, and uh, in this case, we'll skip the else because our cents is already greater than 100. So we return 10. So you can see $14.10 uh, will get stored over here. Uh, which is the right answer. Okay. Uh, so that brings us to another question. What if somebody tried to do in the next line uh, currency C4 equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3? What will happen? Do we have to overload uh, one more operator plus so that instead of taking two parameters, it takes three parameters now? Or the same code will work? Uh, okay. Good. Yeah, that's the correct answer. So, uh, see, uh, forget the currency for, for, for the time being. If you did int a equal to 5, int b equal to 7, right? And then if you did int c equal to a plus b. Uh, remember, once the computer executes it, it translates it to its assembly language. Inside the CPU, there's one adder which only adds two numbers, okay? So this uh, A will be fed over here to the adders. So anyway, it will produce 12, and that 12 will be stored over here. Uh, but the main point is, in the computer's hardware, the adder can only add two numbers at a time, not three, not four. So that then the question is, what if somebody further said, uh, let's say in C equal to 9, and somebody said int B equal to A plus B plus C. How does the computer add that? Okay, and the answer is the computer will first convert this to one assembly language add instruction. Okay, uh, so it will do A plus B, so it will send it to the same adder, uh, bring back 12, then uh, call the add one more time. So think of it this way, this gets translated to add of a comma b in the assembly language, then add of, uh, so suppose this is some temp over here, then add of temp comma c. Uh, so 
But uh, at any point in time, we are only adding two numbers at a time. Okay? So same thing over here. Even if we do C1 plus C2 plus C3, what will happen? So let's take a look. Okay, uh, C1 plus C2, uh, C1 will be given as the left hand side, C2 will be given as the right hand side. So it will compute. Uh, uh, in this example, it will do again uh, $14.10. So then the reply will come back, 14.10. And then uh, the compiler will translate it to one more call to the same operator plus function. So then 14.10 will become in the next call on the left-hand side. And C3 will become the right-hand side. So there will be two calls made. Uh, to the same function. So in a minute I'll go to the computer and uh, I'll show it to you. Uh, we can just put a breakpoint over here and easily test uh, that it makes the two calls, right? Okay, so uh, uh, as I had mentioned to you some time ago, uh, when you develop software, uh, there are two important issues. Uh, number one, you should be able to debug uh, your program. Because no matter how good you are, you'll make mistakes. Okay? So the difference between a good software developer and somebody who's not so good is not how quickly they develop the code, how quickly they debug the code. Because both of them will make mistakes. right? And of course, uh, then you should be able to test your code. Uh, because you may not, uh, for, for example, let, let's say we forget this condition we forget this to write this and simply do this. So there's no else over here. Uh, we simply they, uh, write temp uh, dot dollars equal to LHS plus RHS plus dollars. And we say temp dot cents equal to uh, LHS dot cents plus RHS dot cents. Okay. So all we are doing is simply adding the two dollars, adding the two cents, no other code over here. So let me just remove that. So just these two lines of code. Right? So now if you uh, call this function with, let's say, five dollars, forty cents, seven dollars, thirty cents, uh, will it produce the right answer? Okay, uh, take a look over here. Temp dot dollars equal to LHS dollars plus right. So it will do 12, right? Then temp dot cents equal to LHS dot cents plus RHS dot cents. So 40 plus 30, 70. That's the right answer. Okay? But uh, if somebody 